the Boeing 747, perhaps Boeing's best-known aircraft ever built. First taking to the skies on February 9th of 1969 out of their massive Everett facility, the 747 proved that the program was actually going to be successful on that very important February morning. She made her very first successful test flight. The Boeing 747 revolutionized aviation, including bringing down the price of travel for all of us. She was the very first wide-body aircraft, meaning the first to introduce a middle aisle, allowing for many more seats, which is common today. The 747 program also introduced many other innovations which have changed the face of aviation to this day. This aircraft would enter service with Pan American World Airways in January of 1970, flying across the ocean from New York to London. The 747 and Pan Am revolutionized the aviation industry, and this airplane was also taken up by many other customers. However, by the mid-1970s, something had changed. Pan Am came to Boeing with a request, a longer range, possibly smaller 747 variant, to fly their longest route from JFK to Iran. Boeing came up with a solution to create a longer range, lower capacity variant specifically for Pan Am. This aircraft would take its very first flight on July 4th of 1975. Later that summer, Boeing would introduce the world to an all-new 747 aircraft, designed specifically for Pan Am's needs, the 747SP, standing for Special Performance. From the outside, it looks like any 747, until you look at the size. The SP is a major shrunken variant of the Dash 100, while keeping the same engines, tail, and wings. This makes the SP an odd-looking bird, but it did reduce the capacity and increased the range of the 747 quite substantially, just as Pan Am had requested. However, it was not the massive commercial success Boeing had hoped for. In fact, the 747SP would go down as one of Boeing's biggest commercial failures. That brings us to 2025, where Pratt & Whitney Canada would be sending their iconic 747SP to EAA AirVenture Oshkosh 2025. That brings us to the subject of today's video, a detailed tour of Pratt & Whitney's Boeing 747SP and some history while it's on display here at Oshkosh. I hope you enjoy the video. So here's the story so you all know. The 747SP would only be at Oshkosh for a few days. I had planned to come to Oshkosh on Wednesday, which just by my luck happened to be the day the SP would be here. So I figured I might as well make this video, showing you all around. There were also options to go on board the aircraft, and when I found out about this, I knew we had to do that. But first, before we go any further, let's meet the star of today's show, Charlie Golf Tango Foxtrot Foxtrot, registered to Pratt & Whitney Canada and one of the last flying 747 SPs. She was originally delivered to Korean Airlines, one of the few airlines that also took up 747 SPs, painted in their gorgeous livery seen here, which we all will miss. Pretty soon, however, it was time to get in line to board Pratt & Whitney's iconic 747 SP. As I mentioned, the plane was here for Pratt & Whitney's 100th anniversary, Pretty soon, however, it was time to join the massive line, after a quick selfie, to get on board Pratt & Whitney's iconic 747SP. Also, it was amazing that this aircraft is so huge. I mean, I know an SP is a shrunken 100 variant, but it is still huge. For scale, here's me with the engines, the JT9Ds that were originally on the 747s, which are not small by any means. For another scale comparison, the tires and wheels of the landing gear on the SP are so huge, copied from the 100. Here I am next to them for scale, on a different 747. But pretty soon it was time to actually board this iconic aircraft, just like those people up there, using air stairs. 
Look at that. The size and scale of 747s, even the smaller SP, never ceases to amaze me. Also, as you can see by the picture here, here's what the fifth engine looks like when they're testing an engine on the SP. That is the main purpose of this aircraft. And here's the cockpit pictures I found off Brent and Whitney's website, as we were not allowed to actually go upstairs or visit the cockpit at all which was a bit of a bummer. We were, however, able to see the nose section of this aircraft, which included these few seats, and its original color from Korean Air when they used to operate the plane. Pretty cool that Pratt and Whitney kept this. There were also a few other remnants of Korean Air scattered throughout the aircraft, like the Korean writing here on the bathroom door, which was pretty funny. Continuing toward the back of the plane, you can tell this is no ordinary 747 built for carrying passengers anymore. It's filled to the brim with computers and specialized equipment for testing new jet engines when they have them mounted outside. There's also still that iconic view on any 747, which I couldn't miss out on. This had to be one of the coolest experiences I've ever had. And you can see here there's still retained overhead luggage bins and numbers for seats as if it were flying people. This bank of computers back here is used for actually powering the engine. These controls over here are used for adjusting the thrust and measuring the relative power the engine is creating when it's outside on the pylon flying through the air. The latest engine this aircraft helped certify was the Pratt & Whitney geared turbofan or GTF engine, the company's new flagship engine. This is also why the plane was re-registered Golf Tango Foxtrot Foxtrot to signify GTF for geared turbofan. Oh yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, very cool. For those of you who didn't catch that, I grabbed a patch on my way out that said Pratt & Whitney 100 years, which was cool. Also, out here on the right, you can see the pylon where they'd attach an engine for testing, like I showed in the photo earlier. Pretty cool. And this aircraft was by far the biggest on display here at Oshkosh, sitting at Boeing Plaza. Here's what happened the last time I went off a 747. It was so incredible to actually walk around this iconic aircraft, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. But keep watching, as there's still some more cool things to see once we get off the plane. There are those classic ends on the wing. These are actually radio antennas. The receivers can be seen on many old Boeing aircraft. A few days later, it was time for the 747SP to go home. Again, unfortunately I did not take this footage, and the credit is below. Also, I hope you enjoyed this video. Going around the 747SP has to be one of the coolest experiences an aviation geek like me can do, especially a Boeing 747 of any kind. This also marked another item for me. I've now seen every 747 variant. If you liked the video, make sure to subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and leave me a comment. I'd appreciate it. Now, I'll stop talking for a little bit and leave you with these final scenes of the 747SP taxiing out for takeoff. Also, can we all acknowledge right here, a 747 with a Beechcraft Bonanza V-tail. How perfect this is? I mean, come on, people.
And as always, you know the drill. I'll be wishing you blue skies and tailwind.